The Stalker games do not give a lot of insight on how the outside world sees the Chernobyl anomalous zone. And while the common people might not know what is going on there, governments and other powerful organizations are bound to get interested in the phenomenon that is the zone. Because of this, many fans have speculated that foreign states and entities will try to enter and research the zone. Well, what if I told you that the developers had planned something which perfectly illustrated this idea? A faction sent into the zone by the United Nations and known as the International Scientific Group. Hello stalkers and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video we shall take a look at the UN's involvement in the zone and the ISG faction. We will present the IDs and stuff that was removed during development and see what actually remained in the final games. Before we start, a small disclaimer. The name UNISG, which you are probably familiar with, was never actually used by the developers when describing the stalkers and scientists working for the United Nations. In this video I will use the name ISG for the sake of convenience, but no this name is not official at all, as it was given by the fans. Although they did not create it of thin air, as we will see a bit later in the video. That being said, we can properly begin. The concept of foreign organizations investigating the zone was formed early in Shadow of Chernobyl's development. According to the files salvaged by fans, GSC had created models for several units of Western soldiers, including the German Kommando Spezialkräfte, the US Army Airborne Special Forces, the NATO Rapid Response Force, and the British Special Air Service. Unfortunately, we don't know anything else about these groups, and it's very possible they were simply made to experiment or were only planned for the multiplayer. Either way, they were completely cut from the game, and in the end these models turned into the mercenaries. Now, there are theories which claim the mercenaries are working for Western clients, possibly NATO. However, I must remind you that there is no evidence to back this up. Yes, mercenaries mainly use weaponry and equipment of Western origin, but this does not prove anything. Still, it seems the developers were not completely against the idea of having foreign organizations getting involved in the zone, especially when it came to scientific stuff. Indeed, and despite everything that was cut, the final game still contains a trace of this in the form of a PDA folklore entry called The Chronicles of Heged Globalists. The story describes a large-scale scientific expedition, which counted around 30 recognized scientists from all over the world. They had top-of-the-line equipment, APCs and a solid escort. Unfortunately, this did not prevent the mission to end up in tragedy as Psy missions, mutants and raiders made quick work of the staff. In the end, only one professor and two stalkers made it out alive, and since this incident, foreign scientists have been much less eager to come to the zone. By the way, thank you to Fat Yoshi for providing the screenshots. Moving on to Clear Sky, this is where things get more interesting. During development, the ID came for a new faction composed of United Nations scientists. They are mentioned in the design document for Anarchy Cell, the game that would become Clear Sky. The file reads, Intro movie. Main character mercenary leads the group of UN scientists to a strange place in the zone, where common nature decrees are not working. The walls are corroded, the huge stones are in the air, the ground is filled with anomalies. When the group comes closer to this place, the blowout starts. 
the mercenary loses his consciousness and sees strange dreams about Monolith and a pillar of energy that goes from the NPP into the sky. So it seems that in the game's opening cutscene, rather than guiding some unknown scientists into the swamps, Scar was instead supposed to lead UN scientists towards a strange place right before the big mission hit. Thankfully, we have more information available on this, found in leaked files and builds, such as 3120. I am not at all an expert in builds, but the YouTuber known as Strelok is, is the one who helped me. Strelok is currently on a mission making great video reviews of all the builds, so if you are interested in cut content and the development history of the Stalker games, I strongly suggest you visit his channel. Back to our build 3120, if you play it normally as it is, you will not find anything related to ISG. However, fans were quick to salvage the missing pieces from all the leaked data, and they found interesting files related to the lost UN faction, including voice lines for the opening cutscene and 3D models of the ISG stalkers. As you can see, they used a recolored version of Monolith suits, so it's possible this was just a placeholder, although the patch for the faction was already made. Furthermore, if we take a very close look at the suits, we will discover that the words International Scientific Group are written on one of the pockets. And that is the reason why the fans decided to call this faction ISG. On top of that, with the elements at their disposal, the fans have also created an extended version of build 3120, which includes a lot of stuff that was restored. And guess what? They managed to recreate a raw depiction of Clear Sky's original opening cutscene where the UN stalkers are featured. This is what it looks like. Командир, мы нашли безопасный проход. Двинулись. Соблюдать предельную осторожность. At this point, it seems snorks were supposed to attack. However, this is where the recreation of the scene ends. Still, we do have a bit of info on what was to happen next. Eventually, the snorks would have been dealt with, and the team was to continue its mission, which was to take measurements of this strange place. Unfortunately for them, the mission was to burst out right at this moment, ending the cutscene. What we have in this extended 3120 build is obviously unfinished, very early in development. As you can see, there are two more Scars here, even though we are playing as Scar himself. You can talk with them and the UN Stalkers, but you won't get anything out of it. Also, their faction name is simply Stalker. Moreover, the map where all of this takes place is a reduced version of the famous generators area that was removed from Shadow of Chernobyl. I'm sure you've seen at least once such clear sky promotional artwork. 
Well, it seems this is exactly the location we are talking about. I can only guess they chose it for the material because the place is kinda mysterious and fascinating. Plus, it was going to appear in the game's introduction as the goal of the UN expedition led by our protagonist. Anyhow, it is unknown if the ISG faction or the generator's area were to have a bigger role in the game or if they were to be featured only in the opening cutscene. From the information we have, it seems the latter is more likely, but who knows. At the moment, this is all the information we have about the UN faction in Clear Sky. It is not much, nevertheless it is enough to make us think about a lot of stuff that could have potentially happened, as well as to ask ourselves some interesting questions. For example, we can wonder how the generator's area would have been implemented. Indeed, the original idea of the generators from Oblivion Lost was removed from Shadow of Chernobyl, and instead of appearing as their own separate map, the generators were moved to the power plant. Therefore, if Clear Sky was to present a different depiction of the generators, the devs should have found a way to explain it. Perhaps the generators planned for Clear Sky were a completely different area, not located at the center of the zone. Or it is possible the reason this was cut is simply because the generator's map did not appear in Shadow of Chernobyl. In case you are not aware, the development of Clear Sky started before the release of Shadow of Chernobyl, so there is a possibility all of this was made before the decision to remove the generator's area was taken, hence they were cut from both games at the same time. In any case, the fact that ISG was able to reach such a location seems to indicate they were a serious group. It looks like the UN stalkers were real pros, well trained and well equipped, in a similar faction to the mercenaries. It is also possible they had some relations to the mercs, as they were seen being guided by Scar. All in all, ISG remains quite a mysterious faction. Although they were removed, you might be surprised to learn that there are still mentions of UN operations within the zone in the final version of Clear Sky. The first piece of info comes from Orest, the leader of the loners in the Agroprom Institute. In his story, he reveals that his friend Leska was apprehended by international troops near the zone's border. This confirms the presence of foreign soldiers in the perimeter, yet it remains unclear if they have official authorizations to operate here. It could be that they are working with the Ukrainian military. Then an even better description is made by the mercenary leader, Hog. This dialogue is unlocked after you use the D-Army antenna to help Leshy's squad get out of the space anomaly. Hog says, Have you heard about a new major expedition into the zone? Technically, they're environmental researchers from the UN, but that's just on paper. Sure, they got a couple of four-eyed scientists, but one look at all the others tells you they're seasoned fighters. No idea why they're here. Oh, and dig this, they're not using guides. Either they're being guided by satellite, or their mission is so secret that no one else could be let in on it. They seem to be approaching the radar. I don't know how this will end, but I got a feeling it won't be pretty. This confirms the UN operations in the zone are indeed real, and apart from the no-guide part, this depiction is quite close to what we saw earlier about the UN stalkers in the development of Clear Sky. They once again appear to be a group that means business, composed of resourceful individuals who are able to make deep raids into the zone. Moving on to Call of Pripyat, I could not find much about this topic within what was cut during development. 
Thankfully, the release version of the game does feature a few significant pieces of info regarding the United Nations. If you order an assault weapon from Nimble, there is a chance that you will get a weapon of Western origin. In the case of the GP-37, Nimble will reveal the following. It was previously owned by a UN observer. Their group was sent to the zone to investigate. However, the situation turned out for the worse. And in the case of the FT-200M, he will also mention I got it from some unlucky UN observers. Furthermore, there is the mysterious crashed UAV. This aircraft is of American origin, but we still don't know who it belonged to. Remember when Hogg said that UN troops use satellites instead of guides? Well, maybe they also use such drones to navigate within the zone. Thus, it is possible this UAV would have been from the UN. Unfortunately, it crashed in strange circumstances. In fact, its destruction could even have been the reason for the failure of the UN expedition mentioned earlier by Nimble. Who knows? Either way, all of these elements make it clear that foreign operations within the zone are indeed canon in the Stalker games, despite the numerous removals of content. Still, the exact nature of the UN expeditions remains unknown, and because of this, fans have been left to use their imagination. That is why the faction UNISG was added to the sandbox mod Anomaly. I'll be honest, I think the depiction of the group in this mod is quite lacking, as it does not have much going for itself and is very similar to the mercenaries. Besides, considering the popularity of the mod, you probably already know about how UNISG was adapted in it. For these reasons, I won't get any deeper on the topic of UNISG from Anomaly. The upsetting thing is that, sadly, I don't know of any other mods which include the UN Stalkers, so if you know any, please let me know. And this brings us to the future, Stalker 2. For the moment, there is no evidence that the United Nations or any foreign organizations will be included into the new game. Still, it is definitely a possibility, especially since GSC is targeting the Western market more than ever before. One way this could be done is through the CIRCA, the Scientific Institute for Research of the Chernobyl Anomalous Area, which will be featured in the game. It would make sense for scientists and specialists from all over the world to be part of the CIRCA. At least for me, this is the most obvious place where foreigners could be seen. But who knows, perhaps I'm wrong about this. I guess we will see when the release comes. What about you? Do you think we will see UNISG or something similar in Stalker 2? Let me know in the comments. Well, we did it. After my video on the Sin faction, many requested I do the same with UNISG. It took some time, and unfortunately there is not as much interesting things to say about ISG than there is for Sin. However, I hope you still enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching, Stalker, and goodbye.